The beast has arrived. We were one of the first ones to get our hands on this 70 pound home theater receiver from Denon, the AVR A1H. We'll take a look at all of its great features and discuss what we heard when we put it through its paces in our listening tests. But before we get too far, we do have to point out that when you get into this price range, there are a lot of possible setup options, including using separate components. So hopefully this video will help you decide if this true monster of a home theater receiver is the right one for you. Now. Let's get started. Audio Advice was one of the very first Denon dealers in the entire United States. While they were founded in Japan way back in 1910, their gear didn't make it to the US until 1978. At that time, the importer initially brought in a massive direct drive turntable, but it was just a big platter that needed a plinth to sit in to make a complete turntable, and you still needed to add a tone arm. VPI made a custom plinth for it, and we had one on display in our very first Raleigh showroom. Denon quickly brought in new turntables, integrated amps, stereo receivers, and cassette decks that were all built at a level like nothing else we had in the store except high-end separates even came close to. Their first CD players won all kinds of awards and just sounded amazing at the time and like the earlier products they were all built to last. Now fast forward several decades and Denon is still making gear out of their Shirakawa plant in Japan that rivals the build quality Audio Advice saw way back in the beginning. The new AVR A1H is certainly a prime example of high quality construction and great sound. It's interesting how the channel count on some home theater receivers has been growing ever since the introduction of immersive audio formats like Dolby Atmos, DTS-X, and Oro 3D. Just a few years ago, seven channels seemed like a lot, but now that has grown from seven to nine to 11 to 13, and now with the new Denon AVR A1H, a whopping 15 powered channels on board. As these immersive formats have become so popular from the mixing side, all of us in the great home theater have found adding extra channels really enhances the overall experience. All right, now feature-wise, I could probably just say the AVR A1H has everything under the sun and just be done. But just to cover it, you get five immersive audio modes with Dolby Atmos, DTSX, IMAX Enhanced, Oro 3D, and even Sony's 360 Spatial Audio. The 15 powered channels can give you up to nine bed channels, which would be your front left, right, center, a pair of wides, which for those of you who are unfamiliar with the new wide speaker selection, are on the side walls in between your main speakers and surround speakers. You then have your main surrounds and rear surrounds for a total of nine. It supports six channels of upper effect speakers if you use all nine bed channels, but if you go with seven bed channels, you can do up to eight upper speakers. What is really neat too is if you are a fan of DTS or Oro 3D, you can set up a configuration of eight upper level speakers that will cover all three formats, Dolby Atmos, DTS, and Oro 3D. All of the different possible combinations of upper speakers from two to eight are given. We counted about nine or 10, and the incredibly well done screen guide will walk you through all of this, visually showing you the speaker type and position one should be in. And I do have to hand it to Denon with their on-screen guide to set up the unit. It is so clear in what you need to do, it would really be hard for a beginner DIY person to not get it set up properly. They even have a section that shows you the back panel of the receiver and where each speaker pair gets connected that will change based on the speaker layout that you have configured. Now speaking of amp channels, the AVR A1H lets you tell each and every channel the speaker impedance load for 8, 6, or 4 ohms to help the amp best deliver the best performance for that speaker. You get 4 independent subwoofer channels with the ability to assign all 4 the same bass signal or have it do signal routing so the closest speakers to the sub send their low frequency into that subwoofer. Now, if you need additional help setting up your unit, one advantage to purchasing from Audio Advice is that our experts will help you plan your theater and offer setup help should you need it. We live and breathe home theater and would love to help you dial in your theater to have the very best performance. Another pretty neat feature is the two channel audio playback settings. You can go in and completely change how two channel is played back. For example, with home theater, you might have your main right and left speakers set to an 80 hertz crossover, but for two channel, you could tell them to be full range and turn off the subwoofer. And in this same vein, if you're in a home theater mode and want to do all channel stereo, it's just a quick button push on the remote just to engage it. Now on that same button that brings up all channel stereo, there are also some other neat things that are nice to be able to quickly access as you can see from the screenshot on this menu. 
And if that were not enough, you can also get two configuration presets where you can change things around as well. On the crossover point, I do wish they would have offered a little bit more. This is just a nitpick, but if you watch our video on how to set up your center channel speaker that we will link below, it is very handy to have fine gradients of crossover settings, especially for the center if it's in a cabinet, to try to adjust for the cabinet resonances. The Denon gives you 40, 60, 80 hertz, then jumps to 10 hertz increments. I wish it offered 50 and 70 hertz like some other units do, but most people will use 80 hertz, but if you like to really fiddle around, you might be just a tiny tiny bit limited here. As you might expect, you are also covered on all the latest video formats with 8K, HDCP 2.3 on all seven HDMI inputs. It will upscale to 8K as well. But speaking of upscaling, some of the units from their sister company, Marantz, lets you connect up to legacy component or composite video sources and scale them up to play through the HDMI out. There are none of those legacy connections on this Denon. While this will appeal to only a very small group of people who want to connect an old VHS player for family movies, or maybe an old legacy Laserdisc player, if you do fall into this category, just click the link in the description to see our review on all the Marantz receivers that may be more ideal for you. The usual HDR10 Plus and Dolby Vision are here as well, as all the low latency gaming modes with variable refresh rate, quick frame transport, and auto low latency mode. You get five analog inputs, one of which can be a balanced audio input, two each of Toslink and Coax, a movie magnet phono input, zone 2 and zone 3 preamp outputs, and all of the channels have preamp outputs. The four independent subs give you both RCA and balanced audio outputs. We discovered in checking the unit out, if you did not use all four subwoofer outputs, you can assign any of the balanced subs to be used for left, center, or right speakers in case you added a separate power amp for your front channels. Now that's pretty neat. Some of you may wonder where the 7.1 analog input went for SACD. It is missing, but bear in mind, you can still set up SACD to work over HDMI, which should cover most people. Now, like the latest units from both Marantz and Denon, they include Odyssey Multi-EQ with an option to purchase Dirac Live license if you do wish. I do feel Dirac is a big upgrade to the Odyssey, and anyone buying a receiver like this will want to get it probably as soon as it comes out. If you do, it is also important that you use a really high quality mic, something like the Mini DSP. We found Dirac will give less than great results if you do end up using a cheap microphone. Now, for those of you who like to play around on your own, there is a basic nine band graphic equalizer that you could try out. The frequencies and Q are fixed though, so it's pretty basic. Now, Denon uses 10 ESS Sabre ES9018 K2M two-channel DAC chips, which can handle up to 32-bit, 384 kHz. Denon's reasoning behind these chips are that they are able to suppress mutual interference between the channels by pairing two speakers that don't have much interference with each other. For example, one two-channel DAC may handle the front left speaker and subwoofer three, which are fighting for very different frequencies so they won't interfere with each other. This also just leads to a super clean signal path, eliminates distortion, and brings down the noise floor. A great touch by Denon. Power-wise, the AVR A1H is rated at 150 watts per channel with two channels driven. It's great they spec this across the entire audio bandwidth at a low distortion number two, so this is a very honest power rating. And according to Denon's bench test, it is actually capable of about 70% of its 150 watt rating, which is around 105 watts when there are nine channels driven simultaneously, and even close to 175 watts when driving two channels. Extremely Extremely impressive. This also has a massive power transformer Denon says is one of the largest that they've ever used. It weighs in at 29 pounds, which is more than most receivers even weigh. And they have really planned for this with all the heat sinks you can see and the six fans underneath to keep it cool and ventilated. They also use some of the best filter capacitors that they have ever deployed as well. Now another cool thing about this is they set this Denon AV receiver up to come into play if you are not using all the amp channels right now. The Denon AV receiver A1H will let you do a full bi-amp setup of up to seven bed layer speakers, which is a first for an AVR. Even with all this great ventilation, the Class AB amplifiers will probably generate some great heat, so we suggest you plan for that when you are thinking about where to place it in your system. We hooked up the A1H in one of our theaters to see how it actually sounds, and in one word, effortless. With this much power behind it, we weren't too surprised how easily it was able to drive our 7.2.4 theater. 
big dynamic swings and action movies were detailed and super realistic to our ears. It handled our Dolby Atmos demo Blu-ray test extremely well too. We tested some of our go-to demos and the A1H had a great sense of clarity and pinpoint accuracy in every single frequency range. Denon did a phenomenal job creating a beast of an AVR that sounds almost like you're using separate components. And while testing, we just loved how simple it was to switch between the setups in the 1080p menu. Switching over to two channel with just the press of a button and knowing that it's already set up perfectly in the menu made it just a breeze to go from movies to music. Two channel music was just fantastic with great depth and once again an effortless sound to it. Our first impressions with the Denon A1H were really great, and as we continue to test and try new things with it, we'll be sure to include it in our full review at audioadvice.com. Plus, if you have any other questions, please feel free to ask them in the YouTube comments below. And if you're building your home theater or media room right now, check out our home theater design tool on our website at audioadvice.com, where you can plug in all your specs of your theater, put in the size of your screen, and it shows you where your seating and your speaker should go. And remember, when you purchase from Audio Advice, we offer a price guarantee, free shipping, and lifetime support. So the big question is, who is this awesome home theater receiver the perfect choice for? If you want to stick with an all-in-one unit, there is currently nothing else that has all the built-in channel count as the AVR A1H. If you do need all 15 channels, it will sell for less than just about any combination of separate processor and amps that we can think of. Obviously, if you step up to separates with better built-in DACs and separate power amps, you will get slightly better performance, which should be a consideration if you either have a very high resolution or harder to drive speaker. Now at first, I thought the AVR A1H was quite a bit of money, but the more and more I played with it, the more I realized it actually is very competitive and probably worth every single penny. All right, I hope this overview has given you a good insight into what the Denon A1H is all about. If you have further questions, reach out to one of our experts at audioadvice.com and we'd be happy to help you out. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and turn on those notifications so you don't miss any of our latest content. Now thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.